morning. Hello, my name's Waldo. Hey, I can hear you now. No po me no. That's pretty good. Ren me. Yo ju yo go. Asa te ka me. Tutamae. Okay, the stream is blessed now. So, I appreciate that. That <laughs> is quite nice. We were just being dirty, filthy heathens until now. There we go. But now we're <laughs> I'm blessed. Sure it's going to sound great. <laughs> we're, we're properly uh, ready to blitz. Holy shit, you recognized it. Oh, absolutely, dude. Final Fantasy X is one of the best. Oh, dude. Greatest of all time. Um, I, li opinion, I like six a bit better, but okay, that's just me. But yeah, I'm probably, yeah, it goes uh, six and then 10 for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, 10, 10 is my top. <clears throat> so uh, I had to bless the stream with the hymn of the faith, you know? I do the thing with the hands. Um, crazy deep game too, you know? Oh yeah, for its time, I mean, getting a hundred plus hours of playtime out of a game was unheard of, you know, like, crazy. And it's got a lot of, um, as above, so below kind of things happening, you know, um, like, uh, symbolism type things. The, oh yeah, uh, symbols all around the, the, the game are shaped like Blitzball, uh, ring, um, the team the player team that finally um beats the game and wins is a combination of all the other uh ethnicities and races from around the around the planet and when you're playing in the blitzball game you uh draft people all the other ethnicities and races and people from around the place and then you win yeah <clears throat> So the things that are happening in that Blitzball stadium are the things that are happening outside the stadium. And it's a, an interesting kind of mini version of the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, it's got all kinds of uh, allegory there as well. I mean, I mean, the main enemy is literally called Sin, <laughs> which is uh, pretty wild. So, but yeah, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, let's see. So, super fun. Yeah, we haven't talked about video games yet. We always get started on media and movies and... We did anime last week. Um, but yeah, not video games. We'll have to cover that at some point, too. All right. Let's see. Halo Three. Uh, video game. I'm not a shooter guy. I can't do it. Harsh is my Fair mellow. Uh, I think the first Halo came out, and we all thought it was cool. I was playing at somebody's house, and then a eight year old blew me up, and then I lost my cool. Because then he started talking trash, and I just screamed a whole bunch Eight of flexes. Eight-year-old blew you up, called yeah, you yeah. A, the N-word. Yeah, he did, yeah. And then <laughs> I said a whole bunch of mean things, and then that made my, it made me literally angry. So, like, my entire body is, like, ready to fight. And I was like, man, what, what is going on here? I don't like this. Uh, so I don't play them, generally. Fair enough. I don't play much anymore either, but uh, Halo, Final Fantasy X and then Halo 3 were like my childhood. Mm -hmm. I played something like a ridiculous 8,000 matches of Halo 3 back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, I'm not super competitive. I don't care if anybody else wins. And if I try to win and really think that I should, and then I don't, it upsets me greatly. Yeah, I find myself much less competitive in my old age <laughs> nowadays than uh, than I used to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to get started on the news? Absolutely. Okay, so. I have some of these links that you sent me. Okay, cool. We can start with uh, Mitch McConnell sides with Joe Biden against extreme Republicans. So this is what the old Dark Brandon was saying during the... Uh, uh, State of the Union, when he was giving him grief about uh, canceling Social Security and Medicare. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Rick Scott, uh, last year, a plan, a plan released by Scott last year would see all federal legislation subject to reauthorization by Congress every five years. So all federal legislation has to be voted on again every five years. And if it doesn't pass, it ceases to exist. It just dies and stops. That it's was... an interesting proposal. Oh, God. Um, it is I don't a think it's a nightmare. Good idea. Yeah. I think it would turn Social Security and Medicare into the same kind of debacle that the uh, debt ceiling is. So the debt ceiling right now is a rule that they imposed on themselves and it's used by a political football on both sides and that would happen the exact same thing would happen to social security and medicare if rick scott's plan went into action we would get down to that that five-year deadline and it would be I don't know, january and if they don't vote for social security to continue by january 31st like Social Security stops. And both sides would say, hey, we will vote for it, but only if you do this for us, or we put this pork over here, or we put this uh, uh, thing in the in the legis in the bill. They would the the people on the Democrat side would try and force their issues into that bill that has to pass. And then the Republicans would try and force their ideas into that bill that would have to pass, and then nobody would pass it. Then February first would come along, Social Security shuts down. And everybody would blame the Democrats, honestly. Um, and then it would be the Democrats' fault, no matter what the Republicans put uh, in that bill. No matter what the, Mitch McConnell forces into that silly five-year thing, it would be the Democrats' fault. February 1st, that Social Security's gone down. And then the people who, wouldn't, who rely on Social Security and Medicare wouldn't get those things. And then it would be just like when the government shuts down. Like when the government shut down a couple of years ago, you have people all over the news screaming about it and everybody points at the other side and it costs a lot, a lot of money and then people get furloughed and then the thing comes back online anyway and it costs us extra money. That's exactly what would happen with this plan. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like I said, I don't uh, agree with the plan. Um, also, I don't like Rick Scott. Uh, He's, he's one of the guys we talked about the other week that got removed from a major committee. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually lived in Florida for a while okay. and uh, and uh, campaigned for some of the Republican candidates mm -hmm. over there. Rick Scott being one of them. And I found out that he's an asshole. I just don't like him. Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, I was supposed to have dinner with the guy. Oh yeah, and uh, dude was a no show. So oh, ouch. Yeah, not a, not a fan, not a fan of uh, old Mister Scott, and I'd like to replace him with a another Republican. Actually, that uh, <laughs> sounds like a fine idea to me. I don't much like him myself. Yeah, uh, I think as a guy, I think he's an asshole. So yeah, not a fan. Um, it and McConnell there is calling out Scott. It's yeah, the Scott plan, not Scott the plan, Republican, not a Republican plan. plan. Okay. Yeah, he might be on the out. Then is what that reads like to me because you can't have the Speaker of the House uh, 
or not the speaker that excuse me the uh minority leader former majority leader um shit talking you and expect that your career is going to go anywhere um i think it will be a challenge for him to deal with this in his own re-election in florida a state with more elderly people yeah. than any other state so it's very likely that he he's he's pretty much done yeah he might not be there uh and good good riddance <clears throat> Florida's a wacky place, though. It is. You can talk about my, about my boy. Uh, yeah. So, Florida. Let's go over here. Florida. It is a wacky place. There it is. The end of the... The Florida Autonomous Governance Zone. No, it's not. It's only changed <laughs> this much. Um... I can't see your stream anymore because we're doing the different uh, way of sharing screens. So I assume you put oh, your, yeah, your you can't thumb see and me. finger really close together. You're right. You can't yeah. see me. <laughs> I, I will do better the next time. Maybe. Um, let me think. Uh, I think this one... No. This one might have shown what it did. So he is in charge of the uh, uh, Reedy Creek Improvement District, which is the 25,000 acre, if I remember correctly, thing for uh, Disney. I think it's 25,000 acres. Yeah, 25,000 acre resort. Okay. Um, but he doesn't actually like control the whole thing. Uh, so now that he... Uh, the, he called a special session of the Florida, Florida legislature. Uh, they had issues when they tried to do this last year because they were worried that the uh, surrounding districts would have to pay the taxes and the debts of that place, which would have raised taxes on regular people outside there, um, which doesn't look good for them. Uh, let's see. This time, Disney would be allowed, so th right now, Disney is allowed to keep its special tax district, all, okay. most all of its perks, <laughs> including the ability to issue tax-exempt bonds and approve development plans without scrutiny from the local regulators. But Disney would no longer be able to appoint the five members of the tax district's board. The Florida governor gets to, uh, to do that. So the Florida governor, now and in the future, gets to appoint five members of the tax district's board and that is all okay in terms of monetary impact the change it, the changes make it possible for the board to impose taxes on disney to help fund road improvements outside disney world's boundaries sounds like fucking socialism to me uh it also eliminates some disney world exemptions from the state regulatory reviews which could cause the cost of building projects at the resort to balloon So, very little change. Okay. Except for... Don't call that the, socialism, by the, the way. The company, the, the company gets charged taxes to build roads outside. And I'm being facetious. Uh, <laughs> maybe Alex Jones would call that the socialism. The whole argument about, uh, you know, is building roads socialism? And then people get way down the argument tree on that it's it's a silly joke <laughs> uh, yeah i know i the, get it <laughs> no, yeah the the less intelligent uh, people uh would call that socialism uh, you're taxing the companies oh no you're taxing the companies and then giving it to the people that's wealth distribution the joke made me smile but since i'm not my face is not on camera people can't see that so i have to <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, socialism, uh, I have to support Ron DeSantis now because he's a socialist. Just kidding. Uh, look, at that. look at that. What a day, boys. Um, let's see. And so this all began because of the Stop Woke Act. Okay. Um, he proposes it for Florida. 
the people who live in Florida because they work at Disney uh, are upset and they tweet honestly they get woke and they uh, talk about um, what's happening and they don't like it and so they tell their boss hey don't support this and so the current the, no though the guy that was head of Disney said nah it's fine and then they all yelled and screamed at him and he got fired and then new guy, new guy came in and said hey this is not fine and then everybody's and then that makes DeSantis upset then he uses the power of government to try to harm them, I think. Uh, in my view, that's kind of what happened. A company said something that they didn't disagree with with the state, and then the state went after them. Uh, but the... I think it's a matter of being political in the first place. Um, the company is an entertainment company. Um, they weighed in on a political issue. Uh they have certain political um what would you call it things that they enjoy mm -hmm. um self-governing a twenty-five thousand acre resort yeah they have certain, I mean, certain things that are given to them that aren't given to everybody else if you self-govern uh, a twenty-five thousand acre resort you're political that's all there's to it Sure. Well, I'd put it like um, the same way that, that we give tax exemptions to uh, religious institutions, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. um, we, we give those exemptions, except that there's a, a caveat there where the, relig the religious institu institution is not allowed to get political about anything. Right. And if they do, then they run the risk of losing their tax exemption. Right. It's so never, that's it's never happened that's, and it's that's, not forced. But well, that's a right, completely different enforced, situation. But this to me looks like the enforcement of that against Disney. Disney got political about something. They had certain political advantages, uh, like self governing their resort and then they got political and so they're exemption was taken away right yeah that's what happened i don't I mean i get it i it... uh, i can see why it happened you know like fuck around and find out is what happened and disney fucked around with and the government the state came down on them uh-huh and i don't like that idea if a, if a corporation is people, according to conservative thought, then this person uh, then this person used their free speech, and the government came down on them. I don't think gov uh, uh, corporations are people, but it is, I think, an absolute uh, inconsistency within conservative thought. It might be an inconsistency. Um, I don't think it is, though. I think that... Uh, I don't think most conservatives even consider Citizens United as a main tenet of uh, of conservative thought anyway. Okay. Um, I don't view conservatives... Or I don't view uh, corporations as people. Okay. So... If any corporation tweets out a thing, says a thing, or disagrees with a certain law, are those governors then allowed to reassess 56-year-old uh, uh, zoning laws and stuff like that? Are those companies enjoying special privileges from the government that Maybe. are eligible to be assessed in the first place. Maybe. I mean, yeah. It doesn't matter how old it is. I mean, this is a Disney autonomous zone. I think that uh, I think we both agreed that 
having autonomous zones for corporations is bad in the first place. But if they're flaunting un, if they're doing bad things there, then I would not be for the autonomous zone. If they created the zone just because they wanted to fast track uh, building permits or uh, they didn't want street lights right here because look at this the, the, are you this is a street it's paved right but it shouldn't have to have stoplights there's a good chance that this is not up to code with stoplights top signs proper signage red painted curbs uh and um what's the word handicap parking spots you know, this spot, the space right here. And I'm okay with that because this isn't a surface street outside of somebody's house. It shouldn't follow well, yeah, the same you, rules. I'm sure that there's okay got to be a, there has to be a different um, classification for those roads. Like it's not really a road. It's a uh, walkway or something like that, that um, Sure. And, changes the designation and the requirements because nobody if, drives on that. Mm -hmm, I know. And That's if, all. And if there isn't, space. if there isn't a special autonomous zone for them, they have to go through the government to get those things. What uh, a shame. And they have to go through the government to get those uh, building licenses and stuff like that. And I recognize that maybe they should, or maybe they shouldn't. I don't know. It's, it's still kind of a bad guy fight. I don't know whose side I'm on here. I kind of want them both to well, kill each don't other. Don't take a side. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> okay. Um, then we'll move on to... Oh, don't read that. Um, well, damn. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Florida legislature expands Ron DeSantis' program to fly migrants to blue states. This is the thing I talked about last week. The measure mm -hmm. passed during a special session formally created the Unauthorized Alien Transport Program under the state's Division of Emergency Management. So that thing he did that some people said was illegal, they just made a law saying, nah, it's fine. Yeah, but the thing is, just like I argued last week, is that even if Florida says it's okay, the federal government doesn't. So moving people across state lines, it immediately becomes a federal issue. Mm-hmm. You'd have to sue him for it. And then the... I believe he is being sued for it. I think I read that at the bottom here, that people are suing him for it. But yeah. I think so it will we'll just get goes. a judge, probably, possibly even appointed, uh, a judge will look at this and then just stop. They'll be like, ah, no, they made a law for it. It's cool. A Democratic state senator also sued DeSantis over the relocations, saying they violated related state law. Uh, the new legislation would address that issue, allowing Florida officials to transport migrants from anywhere in the country, a modification that could nullify the suit. Yeah, that's what they want. Could nullify the suit. So that's a state senator suing DeSantis in Florida, um, in a Florida court. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody that's suing him in federal court. And that's the difference is... If somebody sues DeSantis in federal court, then no no change to Florida's law is ever going to manage to nullify the lawsuit. If so the that's what the federal have to do, court looks at it and decides to not to take up the case, then it would nullify it just as well. The federal court could look uh, at it yeah, and say, it "Hey, would be, but yeah, they, they made a the rule fact that, that then you can appeal that to the appellate the appellate court." Mm -hmm. um, the appellate court can actually tell a federal court to take a, a case. Mm -hmm. um, in which case, it would be tried. So, they decide if to, somebody really wants either. to block this, if they want to call it human trafficking, if they, I mean, it is across state lines, so it is a federal issue. It's not a state issue. Mm -hmm. um, then, then somebody should be filing a, a federal lawsuit. That that's how our court, our our legal system works at the state and the, the federal level. Okay, and then if they do it next week after this bill's signed, is it still the, a federal the issue? bill gets um, put on hold basically? Okay, 
and like they i think the term is actually a stay a okay. stay gets uh implemented so you you don't get to implement any any of the bill uh until the bill is tried in court mm -hmm. so then why did the florida legislature pass this what was the reasoning what do you mean they 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 passed it because they want to do it in the future and they want they the want last to one it. to be legal right right so yeah they they're... passed it except for the fact that again you can you can if you if you put the legislation on trial there is a stay that prevents it from happening again until such time as the legislation is either approved by the courts or denied. Mm -hmm. But the challenge has to happen. Somebody's got to challenge it. Otherwise, Ford is going to get away with it. Okay. I hope somebody is. That would be nice. Because this seems like a bad thing to do. And I think it's a bad thing, and they just made the law make bad things okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I hate to be as simplistic as that, but that's the way I'm seeing it right now. As a person who is on the conservative side, I kind of have like a um, two different responses to this. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, flying people cross state lines is a federal matter and no longer a state matter. And I don't think that's a good idea to do. At the same time, it's like, uh, you, you know, um, Nelson from the Simpsons when he goes, mm -hmm. ha ha, mm -hmm. like, that's the other response I have to it as well. Like, cause hmm. it, because it made liberals angry. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they're angry when the governor of Florida does a bad thing. That I, we should all be angry when the governor of Florida human traffic. I think, I think it's sort of more you know? more of a um, <laughs> hey, this is a red state, and uh, we voted against uh, you know allowing Im illegal immigrants to stay here, and if you want them to. You take them, have fun. Mm -hmm. That's that's sort of how I I view that. Like, if you guys want the immigrants, then you have them, and don't put them in red states. Is sort of how the thinking is on that. Mm -hmm. The people of Martha's Vineyard did take them, and process them the right way. Good on them. Okay. Then maybe the Florida governor could process them the right way. I'm not asking him to move the world here. I'm just saying, like, follow the law. <laughs> and don't invent new ones to cover your ass. This is, okay, We're now we're circling. We're going back to where we started. Okay. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh... Walt Disney again. Talked about that already. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I brought up this guy's thing, and it's an uh, opinion thing. But um, yeah, I've I read that. Okay. It, um, it, it's it very not, uh, opinionated, but it is the important thing I think I took from here was. This, the Rosewood Massacre, happened in Florida, right there. Uh, the Rosewood Massacre was a racially motivated massacre of black people uh, and the destruction of a black town that took place during the first week of January, 1923, in rural Levi County, Florida. Uh, at least six black people and two white people were killed, but eyewitnesses' account suggests the higher death toll between 27 and 150. It was the 20s. Nobody knew how many people died, which is... <clears throat> bad um this is florida history 
this happened. And I don't, I'm okay with you not explaining this to kindergartners. But if this were taught, this can't be taught under the new uh, DeSantis law. You cannot teach this in a high school, and maybe you cannot teach this in a, in a college in Florida. This is a literal historical thing that happened. And they don't want people to know about it. Mm. And I'm going to scoot down here to the end where specifically uh, the justice included uh, the Rosewood victims versus the state of Florida. And Florida paid out uh, money. Lots of it in reparations. Okay. Be but, it ha but because it has that word, it's going to fall afoul of the uh, education bill. The uh, Woke Act will prevent you, or prevent anybody, from teaching this because it includes the word reparations. We haven't had a case yet where somebody has been sued over teaching about Rosewood. So I don't know. No, not yet, because it's it's still brand new. And all the uh -huh. schools Exactly. Are... And right. I don't know. However, I will ask this question. Mm -hmm. What benefit does teaching about Rosewood provide to a student? If it's in a high school black history class, it teaches them history. If it happens during a civics class or a civil rights type class, that's or a civics class that's discussing civil rights uh, at the high school or college level, it explains to them what happened. It is history. Let's not do this again. Let's okay. understand what happened. And the thing I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago about there being two different types of people, right? Like you've got a poor kid who loves working on cars and he goes to high school and he gets a job right out of high school fixing cars. He's great. He's uh, very uh, motivated. He becomes an auto mechanic. He lives a good life. He never hears about this while his classmate goes off to college and then in, in a different state probably and learns about this and then they talk about it, the auto mechanic won't know this happened. And this is that uh, conservative idea that their kids go off to college and become raging liberals and then come back and are completely different people. It's because the auto mechanic is living in ignorance. Okay. And, and you sort of um, recontextualized it a little bit mm -hmm. when you said in a high school civics class mm -hmm. or a high school black history class mm -hmm. where I would agree that this is appropriate. Like, yeah, if you're in Florida, you're, you're high school aged and you are in a class that is designed to teach Florida history or Florida civics, etc., then yeah, teach it. Okay. However, you are an English teacher or a math teacher. No. Teach English and math. I can agree that's, with that, but that's the, 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 that's the little the difference there is the stop is okay doesn't know that first part. Then it will be I'm sure it will be challenged. Can't we not pass it? <laughs> it's I, been passed already. I know. And I would I'm, and we're seeing the, the books being stolen off the shelves and the schools being very... We already had that debate. I know, but the schools are being very careful. They, and, uh, yeah, everybody that's in a, in a public setting uh, should, be, should be careful. Yeah. And anything that's... Uh, I mean, you, you have to be careful about a lot of things nowadays in I, order to uh, maintain uh, your position. Mm -hmm. Being careful 
I can understand and I can appreciate. Hey, if you taught this in your math class and it was inappropriate to a bunch of four fourth graders, I agree, that's a bad idea. The Stop Polk Act makes it a felony. If a fourth grade math teacher talks about Rosewood, that's a felony, according to the Stop Polk Act. I agree. Felony hey. carrying on what, what uh, uh, punishments, and also you agree with what? I agree that if the fourth grade math teacher is talking about this, they shouldn't be. I'm yeah. on board. Hey, fourth grade, too young for this kind of subject. Math teacher, you need to be uh, talking about math and discussing that. Yeah, I'm you're all right with math. You're, you're teaching addition, subtraction, and multiplication tables. Great. That's if it. some wild fourth grade math teacher just found this out and wants to share it with his students, and does, I think he Man, could Man, you're talking to eight-year-olds. He could be uh, reprimanded by the school. I want, I want the principal to come and say, hey, don't do that. I want the school administrators to say, you need to be teaching at this uh, math and you need to not talk about this. And if the parents of those children are upset, that's fine. Have those parents go to the school and talk to them. Go, have them go to the school board meeting and say, hey, we don't want our fourth grade math teacher te teaching about the Rosewood Massacre. Great. But felony charges? No, absolutely not. That is entirely you know, too far. I really don't have the statistics on... Uh on fourth grade math teachers teaching about the Rosewood ma Massacre before and after the uh, the law was passed. I know. So I can't say that it was for sure happening all the time before, but and, I mean, common sense and reason just tells you they sh that the fourth grade math teacher should not be talking about this in the first place even if they want to share it i mean it's it's 10 year olds like get out of here like there's it's ridiculous uh i think the the situation itself is is absurd mm -hmm. um so we're saying it doesn't oppose felonies so let me see uh-oh. The, the, this new law imposes felony, felony penalties, but it is true that the bill does not impose penalties on educators, does not impose any penalties. It instead mandates that only approved books, school library, and approval must come from a certified media specialist. Instead, supporters of the well, new I law I certainly think that having a book on the Rosewood Massacre would be inappropriate for a fourth grade classroom. I agree. In math. Uh, but I don't want it to be a felony. Now, yeah. to be fair, those fourth graders most likely would not be able to comprehend the book in the first place because they're 10 years old. Mm-hmm. But that's not a felony, right? That's not, that's a, a teacher doing a, a poor job of uh, ga uh, time gating and uh, understanding where the children are. But a, a kid would probably have to report that to their parents in order for there to be a lawsuit in the first place. Educators so. were reminded of the felony penalties contained in Florida statute there. Um, training explicitly warned of felony charges so it's confusion some people are schools are doing training and warning of felony charges educators were explicitly warned of the potential for third degree felony charges as part of the communications specifically about pornography it looks like right yes and that i mean pornography makes... doesn't just uh, doesn't belong in any classroom i know but the gestapo that uh, uh desantis will appoint to the the book committee will call regular books with just two mommies pornography uh, no, I, don't nah, think, I they think they will. I it's, absolutely think they will. It's the depiction of erotic behavior, 
Yeah. I mean, I'm literally reading from your link here. I know. The, I'm looking it, right at you. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's what I think they will do. Pornography. No, it's grooming. It, well, it's grooming. Again, again, if they try it, then it'll be challenged. Or I, it should be. After all the shit goes wrong, after the kids lose uh, an education, after all the books get taken out, it'll get challenged. The books are already been taken out, and this system's already coming online, and other states are starting to pick it up. I'd the I'd rather look at challenged. bad ideas and then not do them. I'd rather look down the road a little bit at the choices and make the good one instead of, hey, we have to do it. Hey, it's going to happen. Hey, here's all the bad things that happen. Let's challenge it afterward. Uh, it might be too late by then. I don't think there's... No. Too late is... No. No. Uh, one if if you have, if you have one year where books have have to be approved in order to get back on the shelf, then you have one year where the books aren't on, aren't on the shelves. I mean, I don't see the damage there. Um, what if it takes ten years to sort this out? What if uh, DeSantis makes uh, is the next president, and he suggests pushing it to the entire country? And that will also be challenged because we don't make education laws, at least on the level that the Stop Woke Act is on, mm -hmm. at the federal level. Because those are recognized as state right type uh, laws. And does that make it okay? Like the state of Florida wants to teach completely alternative history. And they all voted for it. And it's oh, all the call call alternative history. That's not what it is. Uh, but if they did, uh, this this is selective history, not alternative. But if the state of Florida wants to teach selective history and create a two tiered uh, society, I don't think if that's the a good idea. State of Florida wants to teach what the state of Florida wants to teach. Mm -hmm. Then the state of Florida should teach it. That sounds like a bad plan. I can. I'm looking forward to the uh, uh, ramifications and uh, the ends of this thing. Uh, you get a poorly educated uh, populace who believes what they were taught. Columbus if can the populace come back. is poorly educated, then they will underperform, and it will come back to bite Florida. But Florida should be allowed to govern itself. And if that governing that they're doing themselves is harmful to the population, we can do nothing? We just sit and watch? Let and them wait do until it. it's over? Yep. Let them, and, let, them, let them fuck up. And then, honestly, what I think the ultimate plan is, is uh, a political one. A political plan. Make it so impossible for center-left and left-leaning people to be in this state that they leave. And then um, you have a solid right voting base forever. I think the... Well, come here, come here. Map. I think the Republicans want the entire center of the country to contain about 12 people per state that are hard right. And that way they get 60 senators off of 1% of the vote. This is actually even more conspiratorial than the Republicans' outlook on immigration. Uh, it's the, the exact Democrats same. Want a whole bunch of immigration so that you can turn states blue and so that you get the extra power from all the immigrants that vote for mm -hmm. That's a... Uh, you're right. That is a conspiracy theory that Republicans have about the Democrats. And you've now created a conspiracy theory from the Democrats about the Republicans about wanting as few people as possible in the states. Yeah. If you don't like Florida law, maybe I'm a trans person who wants to learn about black history in Florida. What would I do? I would have to leave. 
we have this thing. It's called the internet. Uh huh. And a uh, pretty powerful search engine known as Google. Okay. Great. If I lived in Florida, I would want to leave. I'm telling you specifically, me, myself, personally. If I saw what DeSantis was doing to the school my kid has to go to, I would want to leave. And that is a blue vote leaving Florida. Uh, if Republicans know and talk about that conspiracy theory, uh, I think a lot of GOP, I think that P stands for projection, they just tell you what they're doing and project it onto the uh, Democrats. Uh, they project a lot, often, the Republicans do, and when they say that conspiracy theory about bringing in the uh, migrants, it's because they're projecting their actual plan, which is to make the center of the country solid red all the time, including Florida. And they don't want Florida to be a swing state anymore. It used to be. It's not anymore. And they don't want it to be. So they're going to well, make it, laws it to make it actually, impossible for left-leaning people to live there. It's a swing state? It is. It, it's been a swing state. It's been a purple state for decades. Mm. Even in the last Maybe. election, they only went for Trump by 3%. Okay. But I am, you're right, I am being conspiratorial. And I do believe that Obama actually won Florida. Right, because it used to be a swing state. It's not anymore. At least I don't think it is anymore. Uh, so, uh, sorry, back on track. The bottom line here from uh, good old Snopes is that uh, it does not explicitly require any educator to cover up uh, library or paper with anything of nature. However, training materials provided at county level for the express purposes of educating teachers on the new law explicitly recommended covering unapproved books and warned of third degree felony penalties for the distribution of books deemed harmful to children under a pre-existing anti-pornography law. So that teachers think that there's third degree felony penalties coming because they've been told that there are. I mean, this... So there's some confusion. If, yeah, there's confusion. A little bit of mismanagement. Yes, because a Republican passed a law that doesn't make any sense. This is what usually happens. This is exactly not to bring up the entire abortion division uh, issue again, but this is what happens with abortion. So they create laws that are confusing, don't make any sense, vague as he all hell, and nobody knows what's going on. So is your argument that the law should be more clear? Yes, it should be more clear, but they won't make it more clear because they want it to be unclear. I would write a law that is specific. They want it to be vague. They want it to be vague so that they can selectively enforce it. Okay, fair enough. I think that um, in a couple of years, we'll be able to sort of do a review mm -hmm. of the policy and um, the impact that it's had mm -hmm. and whether or not the books are still off the shelves and what not. I think that it's too, a little too new. I, I wonder how accurate your spe your speculation will be another year or two down the line. You're right, it is speculation. I am speculating. Um, but I'm basing those speculations on just what I see and hear uh, conservatives online talking about. Uh, That's fair. And like I said, I, I, I'd like to revisit it after it's had some time to settle. Okay. I will only bring it up if things actually happen then. Close that. Um, what have we got? Uh, still slightly on the uh, education spectrum. Oh, Sarah Sanders oh. released her thing that she was talking about. There's not a whole lot to go on here. It increases... Uh, Minimum salary of teachers to fifty thousand dollars a year, good. which is good. I agree. This is a this is a good thing. Uh, talks about. Well, I'm actually going to go ahead and I don't know. I don't really care what Arkansas is doing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, with teachers and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. But I'll there's... tell you what my my ideas are for uh, teachers. Hit me. I think that we should make teacher salaries competitive with the overall market. I think the teacher salaries should be probably in the area of eighty thousand dollars starting mm -hmm. uh, with a certain amount of experience increase every year so maybe maybe by the time you hit 10 years you're you're earning like a hundred to a hundred and ten thousand okay mm -hmm. here's the caveat to that is that in increasing those salaries to make them competitive I think that we should be eliminating uh, the unions, the teachers' unions. Okay. And also eliminating things like tenure. Is there anything? I think that other high schools that have tenure. I would very much disagree with high school tenure, but. Uh, I think there are in some states, but not all. And I don't call me on that either. Okay. Um, but I do think that teachers' unions do present substantial roadblocks to uh, getting rid of teachers that are actually bad. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you see in, in Florida and Arizona, for example, their their salary is under 50000 mm -hmm. um, I would I would increase that by quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, I would, I, I think that if salaries for teachers were, subs were, were, competitive with the overall market um for jobs then you would see a lot more people that were willing to become teachers i think the salary is a major roadblock mm -hmm. in finding teachers mm -hmm. uh, making it competitive like a like a real job you know uh that pays like a real job mm -hmm. would be a huge benefit and the my the, my trade off for that is that if a teacher d is not performing to standards, we get to fire them. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fight with some union uh, for two years of legal battles over it. No. Okay. I mean, look at that starting salary in Florida: thirty-seven thousand dollars. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. What do you, you can't survive on that? Yeah. The average is forty-nine thousand. Yeah, that's. Almost nothing. Um, what do you think of the the idea of uh, forgiving their uh, uh, college debts? That's just another way of um, increasing salary. I mean. I'd prefer to just give them a hard number, like, hey, mm -hmm. you, you go become a teacher, you get 80K a year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. If we say we will forgive your college debts, well, to become a teacher, um, there are different degrees that you can get. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you have to have, like, your certification for education or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but different college degrees cost a different different amounts of money so you might see a whole bunch of people that become lawyers for example and then they go be a teacher for a year or two in order to pay off their debts and then they they skip out and do lawyer things you know well, honestly I, I wouldn't hurt my feelings at all um well yeah i mean i get it that gets two or th i mean make it commensurate with the amount of uh, debt you want to pay off if you want to pay off a, a huge debt you have to be a teacher for four five six eight years uh, if you want to pay off a small debt be a teacher for two years i mean i honestly think that would be a good thing i think there is something to be said for experience as a teacher though uh, i think that that plan results in a lot of turnover mm -hmm. which may or may not be good mm -hmm. okay. um i think that if you're i think the teachers the experience as a teacher has enough value in, it, in itself in order for us to find incentives to keep them as teachers. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I think that the salary just needs to be straight up okay. increased. But not tenure. Yeah, yeah. Well, ten, tenure, typically if you make it to tenure, uh -huh. then 
That's only a college thing, right? There's no high schools with, or elementary schools with tenure, right? Yeah, there's, there, I, I don't think there are any elementary schools with tenure. Mm -hmm. um, but tenure is like one of those things where you, you just can't be fired at that point. And there was a reason um, for it. So that you could uh, research, experiment, look into things that aren't appreciated, maybe. Uh, you could not have to worry about offending people when you do uh, controversial research. I think, if I understand correctly, that was the reason it was invented, is so that somebody could put in a bunch of work, a bunch of teaching years, and then once they reach a certain point and they're approved, they can then research whatever they want, research things that maybe the uh, uh, college doesn't approve, may research things that are uh, dicey. It's the opposite of cancel culture, honestly. Um, you could re research things that people don't want to hear. Primary and secondary school teachers can earn tenure in as little as three years on the job. Oh, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. yeah I don't think it's a good idea for uh, elementary schools or high schools. If you're Fair enough. So for public in... schooling, you'd say that tenure yeah. should be eliminated. I am not a, it does not sound like a good idea for public schools. No. Fair, fair enough. You know, I mean... I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I love the idea of it at, at a college level. You know, you at, spend at college level, sure. I mean, if you're going to uh... research controversial subjects and whatnot, then mm -hmm. yeah, tenure helps. And to maybe make you're not. Stay, you can't be fired for. Yeah, it. and maybe you're not turning a profit for that college by doing ten years of research into something. You know, that is research is expensive. We discussed this last week. Research is expensive, and if you're not turning a profit, it's because you've already put in ten years worth of work for this college, you know? That makes sense to me. Yeah, so my my thinking is that I would like to increase teacher salaries by actually more than double mm -hmm. uh, what it looks like in this chart, mm -hmm. uh, just starting. And in doing so, bring in competition for those teaching spots and eliminate tenure and that competition, competition is actually what kills unions. Uh, so the competition itself, I don't, I wouldn't have to eliminate the unions in terms of uh, like any legislation and whatnot. It's just the fact that if I fire somebody or if I fire multiple somebodies, then I'll have a whole bunch of people that want that job because it pays so well comparatively. Yeah, that's that's what kills a union. I think. I think uh, proper pay and people providing good benefits makes the union unnecessary. That, well, that, 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 it's, that's what I'm saying, essentially. I mean, uh, you're right, and, and I would be okay with that. But it, let me throw this thought at you. $33,000 a year is almost nothing. A union fought to get it that high. If there were no union, it would be lower. Well, there's a market rate that's set, right, of who's actually willing to take this much money in order to teach. You don't necessarily need a union to set these kind of prices. It's just that the states or whoever is hiring these people uh, will hire them for as little as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, if people won't take that sort of that amount of money, then sure, uh, they're going to increase the the price, right? They're, they'll increase their offers. Uh, this is one instance where I don't think that the free market is acting in the way that we want it to, because I don't want people that will take the smallest amount of money in order to teach i want people that i want i want people i want the people competing for the job rather than the job competing for the people mm -hmm. uh, so this is one area where i would say yes we need to increase spending and we need to pay teachers a whole lot more uh, because yeah the union is only negotiating in arkansas for thirty four thousand dollars right now 
Um, but if I have my my way about things, then I'll pay them a whole lot more, except for the fact that you don't get tenure, and you uh, if the union tries to fuck with me, then um, I'm firing everybody that that tries, and I'll just hire other people. Okay. Now, if you pay them more and they have better benefits, they may not need a union. So I can comprehend that. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, hopefully. This this is one area where I think that the, the job needs to compete with the market and not the people need to compete for the job. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a pu public good kind of job, mm -hmm. you know? So that's where I stand on teachers. Interesting. Uh, okay. I, I'm sure you disagree in some places, but um, no. I mean, usually I like unions, and I think that they 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 fought to get it up to 33 because it was probably less, or they fought to keep people in uh, for certain reasons. I usually I'm a pro union kind of guy. Um, okay. That's all. And if I think the people that are doing a bad job though mm -hmm. need to be we we need to be able to fire them. I'm fine with that which the unions prevent us from doing and yes but yes they do do that yeah that's because that's why i think that unions in teaching are bad i know that's also why i think police unions are bad but different subject entirely but i think it's very similar uh so i can definitely see your point and wouldn't argue with it because I'm going to use that same point <laughs> when we talk about the police. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I mean, look at these salaries. They're fucking atrocious. This is, yeah, I mean, this is a $35, nightmare. Thirty-five thousand dollars to a year. Get out of here. Yeah. I don't. I don't want my children to be entrusted to somebody that's only making thirty-five thousand dollars a year. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> they should be paid a lot more than that. And they they generally work really long hours with a job that I couldn't do. I could not yeah. be a school teacher. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, I, I would, uh, if they paid me $8,000 a year to do it. Okay. If they, if, <laughs> you know, you like do, I wouldn't, I don't think I would do it for $80,000 a year. I don't think I would. It's just not a, a thing that I would have a good time with. Um, because Guess what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be political. I, <laughs> I, I would just teach my subject. <laughs> I would, I, I would, I wouldn't for the first two or two or three years, but then some kid would come in with a, uh, MAGA sticker on his backpack that his parents put there. And I would have to contain myself. And I don't know if I could, <laughs> man, it's a rough life. I, I know I'd be like, oh, I can't talk to this and kid. Somebody and then, could, could walk into my classroom with an Obama hope sticker and I wouldn't say shit. I know, you know? but <laughs> I know. But uh, it's it would be my job to educate people, and then he talks about I don't know some really ignorant stuff, and it would irritate me if somebody if some kid was in the there really ignorant stuff. It, 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 literally, like I'm the teacher, I'm trying to teach algebra, and he's saying ignorant things. I'd be like, Nah, man, that's like not correct. You should say just things teach that algebra, are correct. No, just I teach know. algebra. I, want to te I just that's want to teach job. algebra. I want to teach algebra. I tried teaching algebra. No. But then, I don't know. And then once kids, I had a math teacher in, what was it? Probably sixth grade that we knew that if we started talking about shit, she would just like jump in and we wouldn't do any math that day. And the kids knew it and they didn't want to do math. So they'd like ask her silly questions. Because she, oh, yeah. she just wanted somebody, she just wanted somebody to talk to, you know? Yeah. We, we used to do that in um, in uh, Catholic school. Mm -hmm. uh, if if we really didn't want to do anything for Sunday school that day, then we would ask the teacher about dinosaurs. And it worked for like <laughs> six straight weeks. We'd be like, what about this about dinosaurs? And what about that about dinosaurs? Right. And got the teacher to go off on these tangents and then... And then the teacher, home. yeah, who yeah. isn't thinking The teacher about got it. super pissed at us one time. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. like, all right, okay. we're not talking about fucking dinosaurs anymore. <laughs> Yeah, my math teacher it was, was great. That that math teacher in sixth grade was like, "Oh, I have all these smart, intelligent children who are asking questions, and I'm able to educate them." And so she felt great, uh, but we didn't do any math. Uh, 
So I'm, yeah. I'd, I'd be worried that they, they would, my eighth grade uh, algebra class that I'm teaching would catch on to that. And, it, and then they troll well, me. Well, that, that's sort of why you need a teacher with experience, right? Because in one year, that yeah. teacher might get caught up in that trap. But uh, the following year, they might have realized that. And so they won't allow it to happen, which is why you can't have a turnover of, of teachers every year. Okay. Because then you, then you end up with the, a, a new teacher getting caught up in that same trap <laughs> and not teaching any algebra to the students that need to learn it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, good stuff. Anything else on teachers? Nope. Okay. And um, I do need to take a five-minute break or so. Sure, sure. Um, so I'll be right back. Sure. So, yeah, if you're uh, watching the stream, if you like the stream, if you like the videos, uh, click the like button, press the subscribe button, ring a bell or so. And then, because I think I'm up to like six subscribers, it's going to be exciting once we get into the double digits. Oh yeah. Very fun. Uh, my, I've mentioned it before, but sort of my high school was almost entirely taught by football coaches and athletics coaches. So it's a little bit different because like they would make money as a coach, but then they also make a little bit more if they teach us a subject or something like that. So they all pick up a subject that they kind of know, but don't really care for. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the world history teacher I had in like 10th grade, uh, was like a defensive lineman coach and he didn't know that much about world history. So he would just be one chapter ahead of us in the book. And I would ask him stuff from like three or four chapters ahead, and he didn't know the answer. He's like, "Whoa, oh, I don't know. We'll wait till we wait till we get there. You're getting ahead of me. Don't get ahead of me." And I, I was giving him shit because I knew he didn't know what was about to come up, or he didn't remember, or hadn't read that far ahead in the book yet. And uh, uh, yeah, I used to troll him a little bit. What else do we have to talk about today? Close that. All right, my check. One, two. Yeah, you're here. You're back. Yeah. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. All right, let's let's change it you up know, just for a we minute. We were Twitch streaming, actually. Uh, you can get some of them ad incentives when I need my breaks. Uh, How do you Because if you play if you play three minutes of ads in an hour, mm -hmm. then there's no ad when people join twitch anymore like um, or when they join the stream and okay. then uh you get ad incentives to mm -hmm. where if you play a certain amount of ads then uh you get bonuses for that like mm. money wise mm. so maybe we should stream on twitch because i mean when i take my breaks that's a good time to be mm -hmm. like all right three minutes of ads let's go <laughs> you know mm. throw that shit up Maybe. People don't I'll... have to watch ads when they join the stream. They just have to watch it when I go away. Yeah. And, and that would keep me from having to talk to myself. Uh, that, would have, maybe... that would keep you from having to talk to yourself. Yeah. I mean, it would be a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I'll talk to you about it after this stream. Sure thing. Because I have issues. Maybe. Maybe I have issues. Maybe I don't. Um, so, you ready for the silliest headline? Let's go. I've ever seen. I've All been right. waiting for it this whole time. You ready? Okay. Representative George Santos was charged in 2017 with stealing puppies from an Amish dog breeder. Holy shit. He stole puppies <laughs> from an Amish dog breeder. That sounds like an AI wrote it, doesn't it? It does, actually. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what, <laughs> what it's trying to tell me. Um. Stealing puppies from Amish dog breeders. Well, and how the news, did they find out about this? Because uh, the news comes weeks after a disabled veteran said Santos used him and his dying dog for a fundraising scam. <laughs> he, <laughs> what is happening? This is the most chaotic human to ever exist. And it's amazing. Like, so, okay, so the, the veteran said he, like, 
put up, uh, it was like a fundraising scam. So like a GoFundMe or something like that of a disabled veteran and his dog that he just kept the money for. That's the, the accusation. He puts a photo of a, a homeless disabled guy and his dog on the street, says, donate money. Then he just keeps it. Uh, but then he did something about selling dogs. He wanted to start like a puppy mill or something like that where he could sell them. And so he got them from the Amish dog breeder, but his check bounced. And then he later said that the checkbook was stolen. Um, I don't know what to do with this guy anymore. I don't think I ever did. I, he might be um, an AI. Is he an AI? If he, this, the number of things that he is um, <laughs> embroiled in. Yeah. It's just absurd. It, it's it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand how one human being can <laughs> be I don't engage have, in this many conflicts. I don't have enough time in my day to do all of those things. Uh, like... Exactly. I don't. How how has it happened? Uh, he's he's all over the road. He has time to write hot checks to Amish dog breeders. And use them to like do a fundraising scam for disabled vendors. Like, wow. Um, so, I mean, this is incredible. Like, the legend just grows. You know, I, I, I don't know what to do or say anymore. <laughs> That's I, it. So, he claims that his checkbook was stolen and that somebody else wrote the checks. Uh, but it's never gone to trial or anything like that. They just said, okay, you got your, uh, uh, didn't match any of his, uh, signatures, but that's not, I don't think that proves, proves anything. Um, I don't think that my signature on my IDs actually matches anything I've ever signed. So one, your signature changes all the time Two, he has different names. So he uses different signatures and he has multiple personalities or something along those lines. Uh, Anthony DeVolder. Uh, would probably write that name differently. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if that does anything, but uh, so yeah. Uh, That's veteran wild. accused him of fundraising for his service dog's life-saving surgery and then disappeared with the money. So he started a fundraising, uh, a GoFundMe or something like that for a service dog's life-saving surgery and then just capped it. I th I'm gonna he is I think he's like some sort of AI his his brain isn't I hate that this guy is a Republican because he just he's such an easy punching bag it's <laughs> ridiculous uh, yeah it's oh, I th he's auto like that like when you're texting on your phone and it like suggests the next word. I think if you just keep pressing the next word over and over again, that's what his brain is and what it's doing. And it takes I mean, you into that's some... certainly what his, uh, his life story is coming out to be. I mean, that is wild. The, the just, just at this point, it's what, what are we up to? Like 17, 18 different, like ridiculous, insane stories about this guy right so i've got my phone and, here and his yep. and his uh his claims i mean like his his grandparents were holocaust survivors and <laughs> <laughs> so i've got my phone out i'm gonna use the auto fill the first word that pops up in this auto fill thing is now a story george is a good guy and i think he would be a great addition to the team Damn. Bam. There you go. We've just... Wow. Your autocorrect is very nice, George. <laughs> My autocorrect. See, that's what he's using in his brain is just his autocorrect. I think that's... Uh... But his... If you go long enough, it starts to get weird about stealing puppies from almost dog breeders. <sighs> I... Yeah, so I that's... think I'm done talking about him. Yeah, me too. Let's uh, 
Let's roll on to a thing you wanted to talk about. Balloons. Balloons. Oh, All right. I got so mad. Balloon Wars. The other day. What is up with the Balloon Wars? Okay, so servants, surveillance balloons were flown over U.S. at least three times during Trump administration, White House says. Now, I read this. They don't have any evidence for this. Yeah. So it's entirely... I, I actually um, tried to verify okay. this during the week. Um, okay. I spent time Googling Chinese like spy balloons, and I Googled it by year. Like I went 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Um, and there actually was one article or one set of articles that actually did document one spy balloon in 2019. Mm-hmm. Except that that spy balloon only flew over Miami, which mm-hmm. is the southern tip of Florida, mm-hmm. and Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And the spy balloon apparently circumnavigated the globe. Okay. So on its path. So it wasn't like directly uh, attacking the U.S., right? It was flying around the globe. It passed over the tip of Florida and Hawaii. And there's the not a lot of military that, bases in Hawaii, so. That is true. Uh, but I don't know what part of Hawaii it flew over either. Okay. Um, and then you have the other two, which I could not verify at all. Uh, and then, actually, um, Mattis came out and said that he deliberately didn't tell Trump about uh, the spy balloons. Right. Uh, because he didn't think that he he thought Trump was too much of a wild card, so he didn't tell him. So that's weird for a uh, former SecDef to uh, possibly admit to treason. That's a little. Strange. I don't think that's weird at all. I think that's the correct uh, thing to I do. I mean, sure, you don't like Trump. That's fine. He is an absolute lunatic, and they kept it from him. So you can't in the first place even pin this on trump but no i don't want to um the other three spy balloons that are being claimed i can only verify one of them and that that sends some weird vibes to me i think because there would have been pictures of that shit like straight up not if they didn't notice it. I mean, I mean, the thing is the size of three school buses. Right, and it's also very high. It got a long way over here uh, before we noticed it. Uh, so it made it across like one state where before it, it was noticed. Where did it, where, what was its path? Uh, I think it made it across either northern, northern California or Oregon. And then the next state that it entered, it got, uh, it was it was when we first started hearing about it. Um, I just like to see this map here. So, no, it it came across here. Balloon sighting one, two, three, four. So it went across okay. the whole country. That's yeah. Uh, that's yeah. But that's the thing. Um, again. It, like, if we had a spy balloon during the Trump administration, you would expect that somebody would have, like, said, hey, because that, that number one there is pretty early on. Right. It probably swept down from Canada. It probably crossed the uh, North Pole. You know, it came across the top. So it came probably uh, over all of the North Pole, then over Canada, and then came in here and then swooped down this way. Because the I latest think one from shot one down to and... four is like almost three thousand miles. Yeah, and they weren't looking for them, so they didn't notice them. Uh, it's, in, I think, that if Mattis knew about it back in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen, uh, didn't know what it was, didn't know how it got there, missed it, and then noticed it, uh, I understand why they wouldn't tell Trump about it. Uh, and I don't know that they're lying when they say there was three during the Trump 
administration. Biden administration officials said Sunday night, but this information was not discovered until after Trump left office. So that's sort of where it, it's it, the the story stinks to me though is that you think they're making that up. I I don't know what you're what you're trying is to get. That at, but... If we had three spy balloons that traveled mm-hmm. across the United States, mm-hmm. there would have been pictures of it. Not necessarily. Right? Like, I don't. I don't. I just don't buy that we had multiple craft fly over the mainland United States. And one of them, like I said, was just over the tip of Florida and over Hawaii. So I can get how that one didn't get blown up in the media. Because mm-hmm. this one went over, like, straight up went over our mainland. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know about the other two. Like, what what exactly did the other two fly over, right? We don't know. They haven't released any evidence or any path or, honestly, any... I mean, they could still be making that up. Just I don't think they would. Uh, well, yeah, and I get that too. It, it, it just. Do you see where it seems kind of fishy to me? Like it does sound strange, and it does sound weird that hey, there's this balloon. Conservatives are giving him shit, and then you're like, oh yeah, Trump had three of those, and nobody gave a shit. Um, and it's like, well, hold on a second. What about like? <laughs> wouldn't we have pictures, right? Wouldn't somebody have like taken a video of this thing that they don't know what it is in the sky, three bus sizes long? not if they didn't know what it was maybe and follow me here um that's why we got we caught this one is because we were expecting it you know um it's almost like uh it went by too fast and we didn't we weren't ready for it if something sudden happens at your house i mean you don't know a civilian that sees something in the sky is gonna sometimes like they're gonna take pictures of it and be like what the fuck is that right if they could have seen it but wasn't this one so high that nobody could see it no you could see the spy balloon from the ground okay it was three bus sizes long it was a hundred thousand feet up it was a hundred thousand feet up so you might not have been able to see it also It it was visible on most days i can't see the sun you know what i mean in my part of the world, most days, I can't see the sun. I mean, I get that, but you live somewhere where it's overcast all the time. I know. And so if it's... But if, we're talking about the if it's path, thing traveling the entire, path, the entire country. This one covered the entire country, and we saw it. If the other ones traveled over Miami, maybe that's a very small port portion of the uh map and nobody saw it if it goes over hawaii nobody was looking up they didn't yeah fair it's if it if if they say it went from virginia to california and nobody saw it i would be confused by that so maybe those first two are were just quick little glimpses and we missed it and the military got some sort of radar ping or a uh message on their uh um alert systems or something like that and they go to check it out they can't find it they don't know where it went uh and then they keep on lookout for it i mean imagine that imagine the air force gets this weird blip that they've never seen before don't comprehend what it is over hawaii they look around they can't find it they would be looking for it in the future so the second or third time that it happens they'd be more likely to catch it which is why we caught this one i i i see what you're saying what i what i'm my argument is that the equivocation that's taking place about three spy balloons during the Trump administration, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think could possibly be actually equivalent. So, like, you're talking about, like, yeah, the, there might have been a spy balloon that went over Miami, and that was a blip, and then they went over Flor- uh, Hawaii, and that was a blip. And we don't know about the other two, where where they flew over or what they flew over. Mm-hmm. Um, this one was, it went straight over the mainland Mm -hmm. for thousands and thousands of miles. That is where my contention is, is like this, this idea that, well, Hey, there were three spy balloons that flew over during the Trump administration. Well, did they fly over the mainland the way that this one did? Because that's a little different to me than, uh, you know, if you fly over the tip of Florida and you fly over Hawaii, that's mm-hmm. that's 
a little different. Okay. Do you so, agree? Or, yeah, or I, no? I agree that they are not similar and it is just a talking point. Um, but that talking point gets released because fuck Democrats. Anything goes wrong. Maytag says fuck Democrats. It's Democrats fault. There's a spy balloon over Maytag literally said, do not let the spy balloon shoot it down right now. Trump would have shot it down. Like she tweeted, Trump would have shot it down by now. And they retort, Hey, three of them came across. We didn't tell you because Trump didn't know and Trump didn't shoot him down. And then Mattis says, Hey, we just didn't tell Trump because he's too much of a wild card to do smart, intelligent military things. Uh, this is all politics. Sure. Um, but it's all relative. Like if the spy balloons weren't flying over the mainland United States and I have to assume that they were because nobody saw them. Mm -hmm. Like you're not, you're not hiding something that this, that's this big flying across 3000 miles. Somebody's going to take, you know, photographic yeah. evidence of it. Maybe the ones that and flew over that Mattis never told Trump about is because they were minor. They were little, they didn't catch anything. They didn't go over the mainland. They, they were tiny blips. They were uh, unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Right. I'm then not those... saying that we should never vote for a Republican again because Trump missed three balloons. Uh, I have a thousand reasons why we should never vote for Republicans again, but this isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah, like this is, I mean, the spy balloon narrative itself, I think, yeah, it's pretty bad that we allowed this balloon to traverse the whole United States. Uh, I think that we knew about it before it ever entered our territory. And then it traversed the whole United States and then we shut it down. I think that's a bad look. Uh, I, well, I agree with the reasoning that if it's over a major population area, then we shouldn't shoot it down because it could end up killing people. And then people would just take the parts. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. The, the Navy and the Coast Guard are out there uh, scooping up the parts from the ocean. But if that had landed in Ohio, somebody would take them. <laughs> right. Um, Even if it didn't kill anybody, it landed on the street. Somebody's going to grab it. Uh, <laughs> I, I do think that we had, pro we most likely, and this is speculation on my part, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, um, I think we most likely knew that this thing was coming before it reached our shores. Okay. And we should have shot it down then. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a military operation. I mean, We're who, never going to know when they knew many, it was there. Who knows how much information they picked up and was, and that was transmitted back to China before we shut it down. Right. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, suggesting the opposite i'm suggesting that hey those first th those three that happened during a uh if they happened uh were near misses small little drive-by things just because you can't control a balloon and the military noticed them it was like what is this and we don't know what's going on they were then they were on the lookout for the next one and this one comes along and then now they're on the lookout for it now their uh guard is up for balloons so they've seen spotted them a couple of times uh a few years ago and just spotting a thing isn't an, a good reason to go to the president with it, especially that president. Um, he does tend to overhype things. Uh, then once they caught this one, they found it and they really let everybody know about it. I think it, they did what was right. I mean, it seems like they did all the right things. Maybe. And I agree that it's a spy thing, but countries spy on each other. It's just a thing that happens. Like, we have spies in China. China has spies here. They put uh, apps on our phone to spy on us. Russia has spy apps, you know? And we have spy apps on their side. Um, I think that the... ultimate thing, the ultimate problem that I have is 
once it had already exited our territory, we went and shot it down. I don't think that Biden was planning on doing on shooting it down once it exited our territory until it became a big media story. And then it was like, now I have to save face. Maybe. Um, I mean, yes, I mean, you can't they... just blow it up and uh, it, uh, over a population center and have it hurt people. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that there are places along that path that it took that you could have blown it up with reasonable expectation that it wouldn't hurt anybody. Um, but we waited until the thing got entirely across our country. Mm -hmm. So that it would land in the water it. and we could not hurt people and collect it. I think that yeah. the collection uh, was half the reason. Uh, your spice hardware is going to survive falling in the water a little bit better than it would on a rock, right? Um, not necessarily. I mean, no. At you don't think I mean, I drop a... at certain speeds, hitting water is the same as hitting a rock. Maybe. But I mean, it, ah, well, okay. I'm not going to uh, play armchair general. I'm just think. I mean, this is what we did. If you think they should have shot it down sooner, that's fine. Uh, I comprehend why you would say that. And I don't think it's super wrong. I don't think it's wrong at all. Uh, that's just a decision to be made, and they made a decision to shoot it down once it got over the ocean. I uh, okay, sure. Yeah, and could it have been better? Maybe. Should, could they have shot it down when it was over Canada? Maybe, but I mean that creates a different issue, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> now we're shooting down balloons while they're over Canada. Uh, one yeah, that, that creates diplomatic uh, right. issues. So. so we would almost have to wait until it gets here to, what is this, Montana? Um, we'd have to wait until it gets into Montana. But maybe they didn't even notice it. Maybe somebody pinged it for the, for the balloon sighting first time in Montana. And then they pass it up their chain of command and be like, hey, we've got this weird thing. We don't know what it is. And then by the time it gets to here, they're like, okay, hey, send us a plane. And then once it gets here, they're like, hey, we found it. We looked at it. Uh, now it's over the East Coast in, in all these very populated east side of the, the country by the time they could have shot it down. Uh, maybe they moved slow. Entirely possible. Maybe they should have the moved military, faster. Maybe so. they should have moved faster. Uh, not going to argue that they should or shouldn't have moved faster, but um, I was just, I I just, just I've curious. always thought that the yeah that the, the three balloons are in the Trump administration. I think that the equivocation and also the um, the timing of <laughs> releasing that uh, information was a little fishy to me. I think that it was actually just like a clap back. It was a slap uh, in the face. Hey, stop slapping me. You do the same thing. Um, I think that it was done that way uh, intentionally. Uh, but the reason uh, Trump doesn't know about them could be lots of different reasons. Either he didn't know about it because it was such a small incident that it wasn't uh, didn't rise up to the level of reporting it to the president. I mean, there's a, a million billion things that happen in a normal day that don't get reported to the president. Right. Um, he's entirely unaware of my stream right now, I would assume. Um, th so maybe the first three, those three that are being equivocated, and you're right, if if those three were minor incidents that nobody had any really hard evidence of, all they had was a blip on a radar screen or something like that, and didn't know what it was and couldn't have chased it down, they could have at the moment in 2019 not known what it was. And then 2022, when they have a real good uh, look at this one, they know what it is, they compare it to the old uh, radar pings and the old radar logs and stuff like that and say, hey, this is the same thing. Now we know that w back then in 2019, hindsight being 2020, it was a balloon and it never got reported to the president. So, yeah, it could go a couple of different ways. I don't think this is a huge security problem. Do you think it is? Um, the balloon? Mm -hmm. uh, possibly, yeah, actually. Um, at the... At, at, 
certain heights and whatnot, you have more capabilities uh, for like ground penetrating scans. Mm -hmm. um, where obviously spy satellites now are, are circumnavigate. They're they're all all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. um, but spy satellites can't can't do ground penetration. Uh, that balloon flew over a whole bunch of places where we might have a nuclear arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if it has the capability of ground penetration, then that would be a major issue because it did manage to go over a whole bunch of places that are thought to be uh, nuclear uh, sites for mm -hmm. us. Um, so it could actually be a big deal, but I, I mean, that's all speculation, so I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay. Yeah. Um, countries spy on each other, but we caught this one. So that's good. I mean, assuming it is a spy uh, balloon, I think it is. Um, it, here's the other, um, the other uh, side to the argument as well mm -hmm. is if it was a civilian aircraft, if it wasn't a spy balloon, um, then China has just now gained the um, precedent to a foreign power shooting down or to uh, a power shooting down a foreign aircraft over its airspace um china does not recognize taiwan mm -hmm. and china recognize china believes that taiwan is part of its country mm -hmm. so if we see china shoot down an aircraft over taiwan at this point they might try to claim it in international court as they were doing exactly what the United States just did. If, I mean, we have the balloon and its equipment, we recovered it. The United States military has that balloon and its equipment. If it is a weather balloon, they will come out and say, Hey, we shot down a weather balloon and they'll no, they give won't. it back to China and say, yeah, they will. And say, Hey, don't let this happen again. This is exactly what we're going to do. If you put your weather balloons on top of us and they can seem strong when they do that. If it is a spy balloon and they tell us it's a spy balloon, then China doesn't have the uh, authority to do what you just mentioned. Unless they think it is a spy thing over Taiwan, in which case, why would we put spy stuff above Taiwan? We can just go to Taiwan. They're an ally. We just go there. Didn't Nancy Pelosi just go there a couple of weeks, months ago? We can just go there. We don't need to spy on them. We have spies in china i'm sure we have an entire government branch called the cia that spies on all the other countries it's what they do it's their job so it's not i don't think finding or pointing out other countries spies is a thing that sends us to war it happens all the time and they all know that it's happening i mean do you think the chinese government doesn't know that we're spying on them of course they do. Yeah. I mean, if I know it, they know it. <laughs> trying to figure out who it is that's a spy. But, sure. Uh... That's that's the game. That's part of the game. Uh, that's right. the... Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Uh, it, it, it. I don't think um, this will lead to any type of wars, especially... I mean, I don't think I don't think either way. If this is a spy balloon, we'll just say, "Hey, stop putting your spy balloons over us, or we're going to shoot them down." Uh, and then we'll, they'll do it faster next time because they're they now they, they know what they look like and they know what they're they're uh, expecting. Uh, or if it's not, then we just say, "Hey, we thought it was a spy balloon. Here's all your equipment back. Please stop doing that." And if we see another weather balloon, we're going to shoot it down again as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's any huge downside to the United States in either one of these scenarios. Uh, I hope you're right. Um, but yeah, Taiwan um, is a separate, separate thing. Um, they are itching to take it back over, but they're an American ally. So it would be a bad 
idea on for China to do something like trying to take it over, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I think that um, China trying to take Taiwan would go about as well as uh, Russia trying to take Ukraine. Yeah. Um, it, it, it it doesn't make sense for them to do it because Taiwan itself, the reason they would want to take it over would be for the industry that, they, that Taiwan is known for, right? Like mm -hmm. they're they're the primary semiconductor manufacturers for the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't just bomb the place and ruin the uh, the thing that you're taking <laughs> the country over for, mm -hmm. right? So you have to do a ground invasion. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you have to cross the, uh, the Red Sea, or whatever it's called, um, in order to get to Taiwan with ground troops. Mm-hmm. Which means you have to send ships to Taiwan. You have to precisely take out the naval and uh, other military defenses of Taiwan mm -hmm. uh, without blowing up any of the actual industry that you want to capture. And then on top of that, you have to send your troops in to take the country. Mm -hmm. Thing is that it takes a lot less money. A lot less time to build a torpedo than it take than it takes to build a ship, and that's that's sort of where the uh, the cost comes into into play. I don't think that China has any any grounds or any capability of taking Taiwan without substantial losses that would mm -hmm. put it at a massive di disadvantage on the world stage mm -hmm. and I mean, every ship they send over yeah has to survive probably multiple rockets and or tor and or tor torpedoes mm -hmm. and <laughs> and then you have to get your troops on the ground those troops have to fight and take over the country the the country and you don't have the benefit of uh being able to like misdirect for example where uh, in World War II, the Allies actually used a magician to um, misdirect the beaches that uh, were going to be stormed on D-Day. Um, you don't have that opportunity with Taiwan because Taiwan is fucking tiny. Yeah, there's only you know? so much space. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's, it's going to be enough. real tough. Yeah, uh, it's small enough that we can encircle it entirely with our exactly. Navy, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean. Taiwan would be an idiot move. Like invading Taiwan would be a stupid ass move for the Chinese to try yeah. to pull off. And then our economy turns on them entirely. Yeah, it's just I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen either. Okay, so we've played Armchair General. Um, my favorite game and anything else in the news you want to talk about uh not in particular talk about that video yeah yeah, yeah the video yeah okay you want okay so what should I do it is under content ID so um maybe we just post a link to it in the video right here. When I when I uh, edit this, I'm going to post a link to the video that you and I watched right here. But it's under content ID, so I can't live stream it. Um, feel free to talk about it and quote from it if you'd like. Tell, uh, describe what you th thought the video, wa uh, how it went, um, and I would suggest anybody who was watching this to click on that link, watch that video, then you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah, that works. Um, so, I mostly ignored the first two minutes yes. of the video because it uh, my the, the point of me sending you that video was that I think it did a very good job of... Um, sort of uh, summarizing my stance on the climate change debate. Mm 
mm-hmm. which we had a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. where now this is a guy from Britain. Yeah, this is an English guy. Yep, and he said that if all of England was to fall or was to sink into the water today, mm-hmm. then climate emissions would only be reduced by two percent. Mm-hmm. And the majority of emissions are coming from, or the major, at least the majority of growth in emissions, especially, is are coming from developing nations like China and India. Mm-hmm. Where, I mean, we're talking about countries that have a billion plus people mm-hmm. at this point, and you're not going to tell them that they can't continue to develop at this point. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he mentioned that there was, if you had a hypothetical button that you could push where if you pushed it, your child will grow up and have a happy life, uh, you know, have a family, have children, grow old, uh, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But every day that your child lives, there will be a, a plume of carbon that that gets pushed into the atmosphere mm-hmm. that everyone would slam that button a hundred out of a hundred times. Mm-hmm. I think that um, that that's a pretty good summarization of of my thoughts on climate change as well. It uh, it does well to sort of explain that what we do in the developed world to try to solve climate change is not going to make much of a difference at all in terms of stopping our own emissions because the additional emissions that are coming out now are primarily from the developing world Mm -hmm. where we don't have the ability to prevent them from developing and even if we did would really would we Uh, i don't think we would so the the only the only path forward is forward with progress in technology uh this is where you and i had had the debate and my primary uh my preferred method of promoting uh, good green energy is with the carrot rather than the stick. Right. Okay. That's where that's that, that's the video. That's the video essentially in my, uh, in my opinion, that's, that's where the video went with that. And I, I, I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to say, first of all, he starts talking about woke. This isn't woke environmentalism isn't wokeism some of the people who hold to uh the treatment of uh ethnic racial and sexual minorities uh equality within those things are woke and they also hold environmental ideas this guy saying that being environmentalist is woke is nonsense they're two different things i don't know why he brought up the word woke in this situation you just described a whole bunch of uh environmentalist issues without using the word woke without using anything about systemic injustices prejudice prejudices or the treatment of ethnic racial or sexual minorities so the fact that he thinks that environmentalism is wokeism means that he's full of it so i'm not going to use the word woke for the rest of this uh, definition because it's not what he's talking about he's talking about environmentalism yeah like I, said, it's I, I ignored uh, the first two minutes of the video uh, okay. because I, I i agree with you um I don't think that it's a matter of wokeism. I think that the environmentalism aspect is Mm -hmm. is where my position is. I sent it. I sent that video to you because uh, between minutes two and eight or whatever, he actually makes I think good points. Okay, great. Um, Environmentalism, which is what he's talking about now. The two percent thing of Britain, that's fine. Uh, in its 
true of Britain and America because we already did our uh, industrialization. Developing. We yeah. did our developing and we are no longer necessary uh, to do that. But what are those company, countries like China and India and Indonesia, Indonesia doing? They're building products sold in Britain, sold in America. They're polluting their area. They're releasing all this carbon to provide for us. Now, that doesn't mean we get to tell their countries what environmental laws they ought to follow, but it does give us some in, some economic power over them. Hey, you, we are buying all of these things. Walmart is entirely buying all its products from China. They have the economic ability to say, hey, China, wouldn't you like to not pollute? We would like you not to pollute. We are buying your products and we would like them created a certain way. Uh, it's not ironclad, but it is something that we could do to lower those numbers from those countries. Um, so when he's, I think he's obfuscating, I think he's deflecting by saying if Britain sank down into the uh, ocean, it would only remove 2%. No, it would remove a shitload more than 2% because guess what? Indonesia is making things there that are selling to Britain and if they don't have to make those things anymore they won't be releasing that carbon they won't be polluting uh, I think that so I, I see where you're coming from but I think that you're wrong mm -hmm. um, the fact is that they're not just making things for Britain for example right. uh, they're, they're making, making things, things for, for lots of people yeah lots of people but primarily they're making things for themselves um, mm, China okay. Uh huh. Now, China, for example, um, has one of the world's largest steel industries. Uh, and there are a number of ways to make steel. Mm -hmm. Some are quite a bit cleaner than others. In the case of China, their steel production is not clean at all. It is very, very dirty. It's very uh pollutive mm -hmm. uh, in america our steel production facilities are are quite clean mm -hmm. comparatively mm -hmm. um the thing is that china uses a lot of its own steel because they have a lot of people they have to build a lot of things so reducing the demand for uh, Chinese steel by England, for example, would not actually reduce emissions very much in that, in that industry because China is producing that steel regardless of whether it's needed by another country. Mm -hmm. They will use it. And so it gets produced, and so that production causes a lot of of pollution. Right, and if we want to change that, we should use some sort of economic incentive and or government uh, uh, messaging and deals and uh, work with their government to produce steel the way we do that would produce less carbon. I agree that uh, th those countries are doing the most of it and they're producing these things. And even if they are using it, you're right. Uh, if they produce all of this, uh, steel and they use it all themselves and they're not exporting that to America, then we need to use economic, uh, uh, leverage against them to do a better job and incentivize them somehow, uh, like your carrot that you're mentioning to stop polluting. And if they won't do that then we have to just keep trying we have to apply more uh, economic force um the How about we find ways to reduce emissions as a positive thing rather than employing the stick there's no way around it if it is most profitable to pollute, they will pollute. 
You have to, there's no way around that. There's no economic incentive. I mean, there's no carrot more than profit. You have to make a carrot that's more profitable for them. Uh, and that is either paying them to do it a different way or creating some sort of uh, demand for their new or better, less pollutive product. And I'm all right with that, but that takes government intervention. It takes uh, deals between our government, our economy, and their government economy, which is complicated and difficult. Uh, those type of, those are complicated, difficult, nuanced agreements that have to be made. I'll agree with that. Uh, I think that possibly something that, that uh, you might be uh, agreeable to mm -hmm. would be maybe we have a an enhanced tariff on steel that comes in that was produced in non or, or not not in the optimal way for for carbon purposes mm -hmm. and that could create a demand for the cleaner created steel i agree um if the tariff is higher than going through a more economical or a more environmentally sound uh, place, that environmentally sound place in China might see an increase in business and then might be the new way to uh, that they go, which would, which would be one of those nuanced deals that I was talking about. Yeah, that is a nuanced deal that could uh, work. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and so the carrot that I was describing mm -hmm. that, that is mentioned in the video essentially, um, is to push forward and basically like figure out, okay, how do we, how do we power things with fusion, for mm -hmm. example, right? Mm -hmm. How do we move forward, uh, in order to get away from fossil fuel technology? Mm -hmm. That is my position is, is I want us to push forward and find ways to do better without the carbon uh, technology. I agree with that sentiment. Rather than punishing the use of carbon technology in the, in the now. It doesn't matter what carrot you use, the Exxon is going to call it a stick. It doesn't matter what brilliant economic plan our government comes up with with the Chinese government and both economies like it if it hurts Exxon's bottom line they will call it a stick they will hire millions of dollars worth of lobbyists to lobby against it they will flood our TV screens with complaints about whoever's doing it um, ruining their economy and they will jack up the price of gas. And I know you, we've, we've discussed the price of gas and you don't think they do it, but I am sa saying, I think they can and will jack up that price. So well, that everything before the part where you said jack up the price of gas, okay. I'll agree with actually. Okay. I will, I will leave that out. Um, uh, they will hire those uh, people. They will buy senators. They will push. Look, I get it for those things. Our system is pretty fucked up. Um, That's a flaw in capitalism. Is what I'm uh, what I'm ultimately getting at. It's a flaw in the system overall. It, I don't know if I'd call it a flaw in capitalism. I would say that uh, the profit motive for Exxon is to not allow us to move to a full, a fully nuclear fission powered uh, economy, right? Like I've I've advocated in the past already for we uh, most of our electricity grid should be powered by nuclear. I'm. On board right, for that. Like, okay. That that's my thinking is is we should be we should have nuclear plants everywhere. It it shouldn't be coal fired plants or um oil fired plants or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The majority of our power should be coming from nuclear. But it doesn't happen because there's enough I mean, yeah, there's the lobbying, but then there's also the uh, public perception. Nobody's nobody will vote for nuclear because 
we had a couple of uh, disasters, uh, not even in our country. We had um, Fukushima and uh, and Chernobyl mm -hmm. disasters, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, yes. I'm sure that I'm sure that oil companies had a hand in promoting those disasters. They did <laughs> uh, in order to uh, to sort of um, stigmatize nuclear power in the United States. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, I think we should be going nuclear anyway, <laughs> you know? That it, it's... is fine with me, and I'm on board, and I think it would be a good idea. Um, but you have to get over those hurdles. You have to get over this hurdle of Exxon talking shit to you. You have to get over the uh, uh, lobbyists. You have to get over the people being afraid of it. You have to create a ton of good press for these nuclear places. And you're still going to get pushed back. And if anything ever goes wrong, they'll scrap the whole thing anyway, because that's scary. It's new and it's scary. Uh, I think burning coal puts more nuclear uh, material into the air, honestly. Burning uh, coal puts more carbon into the air, yes. Oh, coal and, is one of the oh, dirtiest. Oh, and nuclear. And nuclear. Literally. Um What the uh, fuck? I was reading about this once. Um, radioactive waste from coal-fired plants. From the EPA, coal contains trace amounts of naturally occurring radioactive elements. The process of burning coal at coal-fired fire, coal -fired power plants, called combustion, creates wastes that contain small amounts of naturally occurring radioactive material. <laughs> so it, they actually do let out a little bit just because it is a thing that happens. Uh, it's it's a natural product. This isn't giving anybody cancer, and this is not causing uh, fallout. You know, this is just a little bit. 1% can escape into the air. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Coal is a bad idea. I recognize why we did it. I recognize why we're still doing it, but we need to move away from it. Um, and... There are a ton of people in Appalachia and on the East Coast that are still coal miners. Uh, there are very few of them, uh, but they have a lot of political power. And, I mean, we saw Donald Trump go down there and talk about them and talk about clean coal, even though there is no such thing. Um, and he put on the hard hat and then he talked to the uh, coal miners and they loved it. And... Then they vote for him. It's it's a thing that we have to try to move past. There are more... I mean, Arby's, the roast beef sandwich place, employs more people in this country than coal mines. But coal miners are a huge, apparently important voting block. Somehow. Uh, in West Virginia, yeah. Yeah, in West Virginia, and you have to that's, win West that's Virginia. That's about yeah. it. Right, well, um, and so you have to win West Virginia if you want to be the Republican president or something along those lines. So then the Republican president comes out and starts talking about this very niche issue that of coal miner jobs, and their jobs are burning the stuff that is literally harming us um, into the air. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a bad idea. Uh, I don't like coal as a uh, power source. I think it's uh, inefficient. Mm -hmm. I think it's not clean. It's, um, and yeah, those so two things combined kind of make it just shitty it's in an general. 18th century solution, um, you know? Let's let's move forward. I agree. You you said the word progress and I'm on board. Uh, there you go. So, Let to bring it back to that video though that we all watched, um, this button uh, is short-term thinking and I recognize that it's correct but um, they wouldn't push the button if they thought that that 2,000 uh, tons of uh, CO2 into the air was going to kill their children at some point we will get to that and it will be too late what we're doing again just like I was doing earlier in the stream I'm predicting what's going to happen in the future if they keep pushing the button and keep choosing to do that 
it will become too late and their children will die. And we need to educate them. We need to tell them that in these. Uh, uh, I don't think it'll work like that because we, the, that button does not does not release enough carbon to change the atmosphere substantially in an, in a short enough period of time. Yes, over it, time it will become it will. too late, and their children However, will suffer for the pressing of the button. Correct. So it, we need to explain you're, you're that. You're talking that. about an expanded, 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 expanded prisoner's dilemma. I don't know if it's that expanded, but I understand what you're saying. Where, that... why is it that I have to press the button or not press the button when, you know, Jim Bob next door next to mm -hmm. get gets to press the button mm -hmm. and he gets to have his happy family life and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. What's it's yeah, I, I agree. What's most beneficial for my, me is that everyone else doesn't press the button, but I do. That is yeah. 100 percent so, best for me. So everyone's going to press the button anyway. Right. And the thing is, the only way we get around this is by finding a technology or developing or promoting a technology <laughs> that doesn't have carbon emissions. Great. Now, how do we get to that point? We get to that point by the people demanding it. We, this guy on the video, is speaking strictly from the supply side. And he's given the middle finger to the demand side, and I don't comprehend why. This wokeism that he is throwing a fit about, which is actually just environmentalism. So this environmentalism of the young people that he is complaining about is the only reason these things are going to happen. Environmentalism... No, woke is it's demand. Absolutely. Why false. would we get supply if we don't have demand? Wokeism that he's describing the, the, the is better demand. Technology, demand. The cleaner, the the cleaner, better technology. There's is no demand for cheaper. it. No, it's not. There's no demand for it. it. There absolutely no there demand. is demand for it. No, because it's cheaper. If the there is demand for it, yes, and it's coming from the woke people. It's coming from the millennials who are saying, "We see this climate disaster coming. Please give us electric cars." For the love of God, give us electric cars. Why can we not get electric cars? Electric cars start getting to, uh, produced. Demand is the only thing that will uh, will, will get these things created. Uh, so what when we green power is more efficient than not green power, than dirty power, the demand for green power will be way more than the demand for dirty power. That's it. No, the demand has yes. to come first. Necessity no, 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 no. is the mother of invention. Necessity is a demand. What is the word necessity except we must have this? This is a demand. The woke people that he is bitching about are demanding climate action. And there will be no invention. There will be no invention. Without that necessity, there will be no invention. There will be no progress without those woke people complaining and saying, we demand this progress First of happen. all, I already disinherited that part about the, okay. uh, the woke people. Well, then he's a okay. goofball. Okay, great. I am going to stop talking it's... about him and call it environmentalism. There you go. Environmentalism is fine. I am telling you that when... Green technology is cheaper than fossil fuel technology. The demand for that green technology will be much more than the demand for fossil fuel technology. You are thinking like a supply side economic, economist. If there is no demand for that green technology, it will not be created. There was no demand. For electric cars. If it's, if so, it's boy, possible to be more efficient with green technology, there will always be somebody trying to develop it. Because the profit incentive is I can develop this green technology and I can outcompete all of the fossil fuel technology people. You can't outcompete Exxon. They own yeah, you can. so much. They own so many people already. They are lining the pockets of... Uh, politicians and when you create let's say a uh, uh, a solar panel that works and works better you get it put on the White House by Jimmy Carter 
and then Reagan comes in and is pressured by fossil fuel companies to take them down. This isn't just, hey, I invented a new thing and everybody's going to take it. No. It, it, it's not as simple as that. It's not as simple as, hey, I've created something that's more efficient. You then, one, you have to invent it. Then you have to uh, get it accepted and you have to overcome all of the people like Exxon who are standing in your way. Electric cars could have been created earlier, possibly, but there was no demand for them until millennials and young people who see these environmental problems coming demand uh, in, uh, electric cars, they demand companies be environmentally conscious. Does Except for the part where mm -hmm. we absolutely had the technology where <laughs> electric cars are not actually that much more clean I know that. that much cleaner than fossil fuel cars I know that. because they still have to plug into the wall and that wall is getting its electricity from fucking coal-fired power plant I know that and I am demanding that they do something better yeah like nuclear I'm demanding it great but that guy in that video would call me woke for demanding such and then he, at the no, end, he, he pisses and moans. He pisses and moans at the end of that video and says, do something. Why are you just complaining about things? Why are you pointing out all the necessity? Why do you sit around on your phone telling us your demand? Go do something. Because they're young. They don't get to do anything yet. They're still in their education. Young people don't own anything. I will say that young people he aren't doesn't in a actually put forth a, a, a decent uh, resolution. Like, if you're going to bitch about something, you should probably have a solution for it. Here's my solution. We move to nuclear fission for our power plants across the country in all developed countries. Even if you don't have a solution, you're allowed to bitch about something. You are allowed to do the necessity bit. Hey, we need something better than burning coal. Well, I'll, I'll agree with you that, that he's bitching, and I think that there is a solution. Which is what I'm saying is that is if he's going to bitch the way that he is, then he should be presenting a solution as well, which is nuclear. I agree with your solution. And I'm going to say one more thing about him. He is complaining about the people doing the necessity and telling them to do the invention bit. And the reason they can't yet is because they're young and they don't own anything. Young people don't own anything. The millennials don't own homes. They don't uh, own businesses. They're not allowed to own these things. The entire world was bought before I was born. It's not like I get to strike out to a new place and go explore things that aren't, that every border is drawn. The entire world is owned and operated by somebody. So I have to start at the bottom and work my way up. And if I start at the bottom, all I can do now is point out necessary, all uh, the necessity. All I can do is tweet about how we need to do better. And this guy's complaining about it. Uh, but I'm going to stop talking about him um, and say that, yes, we have a necessity right now. And I am pointing it out. I am using my voice to say there is a necessity to avert climate change. Now, what is the invention? You're suggesting that the invention that could... Con uh, avert that climate change is a nuclear power plant and I agree I think that is a fine idea I think that if it were built properly and maintained strictly according to very important and very well thought out guidelines it could get us away from burning fossil fuels it's already possible Florida most of Florida is actually powered by nuclear power plants right now mm -hmm. I mean that's the the state that's hit by the most hurricanes out of any state in the in the union mm -hmm. uh we can do it it's okay so the invention uh, it, exists it exists it's a matter of pushing for it that's so, the necessity of it that is where you get online and you tell people hey this is what we need to be doing hey can right we do except this? that it's not except the the people online are are attacking the wrong thing if the the push should be hey we need to get nuclear we need to be doing this around the country the push should not be 
oil companies are making too much profit. We should be taxing them. That's stupid. We need to be pushing for the use of clean energy, which is the carrot, and not for punishing companies that are just doing their thing right now, which is the stick. Yeah, but their thing is harmful. Their Exxon's just doing their thing, and their thing is you know, driving if, up if if we the did the if we just did the carrot. This is just Amazon doing built, their thing. If we built nuclear power around the country, you would see a reduction in carbon emissions, and you would see cheaper electricity, and that means that you would see a greater adoption of electric cars, which means you would see less people purchasing gas, which means you would need less refineries, which means you would have fewer oil or less oil production. Okay. I'm on board with that plan. I think it's Great. a good idea. I think we can do the other part too. I, I don't, I don't think we, I think we can carrot and stick. We carry it one side and we stick the other. You can do both. You don't have to do only one. Yeah, see, I like the uh, I like my idea. <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't. I I think that in the meantime, uh, the stick is it doesn't just hurt companies; it it hurts people as well. I think that it uh, results in less production of the materials that we need in the now which will increase prices and those prices of course end up hurting the average person i think that you are right if we only do the stick you're right those prices would go up and that would increase our necessity and hopefully people would look either create inventions or look for solutions aka inventions and they would find nuclear and they would find this uh, uh, nuclear power plant that could solve their problems and they would push for it um, social media is broadly a place where you can find the necessity and you can find ideas about what needs to be invented and if we were using social media for those purposes I think we'd be a lot better off Sure. And my thing is that instead of bitching about oil companies, we should, people that are on social media uh, doing this should be advocating for nuclear power. That's the difference is, is bitching versus advocating. Okay. Okay. It's way easier to bitch. So you're always going to get more of it. Um, and solutions are hard, but pointing out flaws and pointing out necessity is easy. So you're always going to have more of it. Uh, there's always going to be more pointing at problems than there is problem solving. I mean, that's just the law. Of, I think that's just numbers, you know. Um, and I think you're right that if we wanted things to be better, we would provide solutions. And even if... I mean, I think the issue that you're going to run into is that the people who want the solution aren't the people who are going to profit from the solution. If the solution is nuclear, the people who don't profit from that are going to stand in your way. Everyone profits from nuclear. Except Exxon. Uh, they're going to stand. Even they do, because <laughs> if... If the alternative is that our our planet becomes a uh, hellscape, then everyone profits from the use of nuclear. Not in the next quarter. They have next quarter's uh, numbers to hit. And if they don't hit next quarter next quarter's uh, numbers, they're going to have to lay people off. And that drives their stock price down. And then their stock price is going down. And that is unacceptable. Well, that's true. It's a good thing you that know, it takes it's... a decade to build a nuclear power plant. I know. And hopefully, which, which gives yeah. uh, Exxon a lot of time to uh, adjust and plan and prepare for the shifting landscape. Right, but they'd rather it be eleven years. 
And now we run into this thing like, yeah, it takes 10 years and they could create a 10 year start tomorrow with a 10 year plan on here's how much uh, market share we're possibly going to lose. But the most productive thing, the most profitable thing for them is if it were 11 years away. And you know what's even more than profitable 11 years away? 12 years away. At, at some point, things have to change. And I hope so. I think that, you're right. Then... You're pointing out necessity right now, and I think you're right. It needs to change, and we need to do it soon, because climate change is happening. I'll say this. Even if it isn't climate change that does us in, um, we do have to stop putting carbon into the air. Mm-hmm. Um, there is another... The carbon in the atmosphere mm-hmm. is being absorbed by the ocean. Mm-hmm which is making the ocean more acidic, Mm -hmm. which is killing uh, animals or killing fish, wildlife in the, in the water. Right. Uh, And that's also bad. So I, even if we have our disagreements on uh, anthropogenic climate change, Mm -hmm. I'll agree. We need to stop putting carbon in the air. And, and the only way to that, that actually is, is part of your article are you just yeah it? you were yeah. talking about it and i knew it. i'd seen it earlier so yeah the, i've highlighted it there that is important and if bringing that down from 30 percent to 29 percent causes bp to lose a percentage in their stock they're going to be against it and there's only one way to you have to tell people that you have to be uh, environmentally noisy. You have to be loud. You have to tell people, you have to talk about it. You have to complain about it a lot on social media or else it won't happen. Or if we're not talking about these things, if we're not complaining, if we're not pointing out the necessity, if we're not online telling people, Hey, this is necessary. It won't happen. And if it does happen, then, uh, BP will, or, or Exxon will come back and be like, yeah, this was totally unnecessary. And here's the thing. Here's the bad stuff. I think the messaging for necessity is wrong. You would, I think the that message from for me, I still have my questions about climate change, mm-hmm. but I do know that the oceans are becoming more acidic mm-hmm. and it's because they're absorbing the carbon from the atmosphere that we're putting in, into it. Mm-hmm. Except for the fact that most people don't know that. Yeah, and so we could educate them. Why is that. climate change the primary argument when it should be, hey, you're not going to be able to eat salmon in a, in a in a couple of decades? Well, this is part of climate change. Climate change is a very large uh, umbrella, and this is one part of it. That's, I mean, that that is my my thing is is you've at this point known me long enough that I actually do argue for green power, Mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily buy, and you've also heard me argue against this. I don't necessarily buy the, uh, the climate change argument, Mm -hmm. but that ocean pH thing is definitely, uh, inarguable i mean that's literally like we've measured that it's happening and it's most likely because we're putting so much carbon into the air mm-hmm. that the ocean is absorbing it the same scientists that studied that are climatologists and they said that the increase in carbon creates a greenhouse effect which heats up the planet no no, no. And... i'm saying that i i get i get what you're saying mm-hmm. there I'm saying that, hey, I've got a measurable thing here. Okay. That's a problem. It's because carbon, okay. right? You, you can argue, like, there, there are people that will, that will argue against carbon being a greenhouse gas. Mm-hmm. There are people that will say that it's, um, it's because of our uh, solar uh, cycle that temperatures are changing. There are people that will say, hey, it was hotter back in the medieval, medieval times than it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those things are irrelevant when you just say, hey, 
Oh, you're going to kill all the fish. Mm -hmm. And then you won't be able to fish and eat salmon and halibut and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a, in a decade or two, because the pH will be too high or too low. That is, mm -hmm. it'll be too acidic. They'll all be dead. And guess what? All those delicious fish, fish that you used to love eating won't be there anymore. That is a more solid case, I think, than climate change. Straight up. It, it just is. If you say so. Okay, that's fine. But, um, okay. For great. the immediate, you've, you've, for the you've person got, like... You've been convinced that this is a problem by somebody happy. giving you... Well, somebody had to explain that to you at some point. I mean, you had to learn about it from some source. Uh, you learned about it. You learned about that 30% uh, increase in acidity. You learned this at some point. Um, yeah, that well, that was uh, that was the convincing argument for me. Okay. Actually, um, that's the one that I was like, all right. Even if I do have my skepticism about climate change itself, uh, the ocean's acidity definitely can't be ignored. Okay. Uh, it's one of those things that's measurable. It's one of those things that we can literally stick like a vial in the water and test the pH of it and whatnot and be like, oh, oh shit, like we're we're kind of fucked okay. uh, if this continues. Like, okay, great. So but if that was the the thing that convinced me, then that should be the thing that's being used to convince everybody else. And it's mentioned, but I you're smarter about the ocean than a lot of people um, or more willing to look at it. Um, th so the issue, so now you have been educated on this issue. You have determined that this is a, an important necessity. This needs to be fixed. This is an issue. This is a problem. We need an invention, a solution. Yeah. And You've come to a solution, and I like that, and it's great. I appreciate, I uh, agree with your solution, and the reason, uh, and I think we have to highlight the necessity. We have to talk about it. We have to convince people that it is a necessity, that it is important, that it needs to be done, and we need to use social media. Uh, the young people, who are the environmentalists, are telling us that it's necessary and it needs to be done. But they're not in charge of anything. They don't run anything. They're not in charge of large companies. They're not in charge of the coal, uh, coal mines. They're not responsible for hiring people to dig up coal and burn it. They're not in a position to do any of these things. They can invent something. Honestly, we don't. I don't know that we need an invention. We just need more trees. Um, we need. If there were a machine that could take the carbon out of the air, that's a great idea. Let's create it. I know, but um, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to buy a carbon machine to take carbon out of the air? Um, what company, what corporation, what capitalistic device do you use to suck the carbon out of the air? And is that machine better than just planting trees? Uh, I don't know. I've never looked into climate, I mean, uh, carbon capture devices, but trees are carbon capture devices. I mean, trees, they just are. Um, but again, what does it take for trees? It takes time, first of all. Two, it takes space. You know, those are the two most important things in on the planet, right? Those are the two most powerful uh, economic forces are in the world. Are there time and space? Uh, sure. So you need a lot of time and you need a lot of empty space. That space could turn a bigger profit if it were a strip mall. So strip malls get made rather than planting trees. Well, yeah. And, and, and like we discussed last week, I mean, I'm, I'm not against the government doing something, okay. right? Like uh, last week we talked about the, uh, the outages in Texas from... Mm -hmm. Uh, frozen trees breaking and then destroying power lines. And I said, well, there might need to be some regulations about power lines that mm -hmm. need to be run underground instead of run as power lines in the air. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes, there is there there at some point there is uh, some kind of action that does have to take place governmentally. Okay, and yeah. and this is one one area where I'd say okay, well maybe um, I know that that, it, that devices do exist to pull carbon out of the water, for example. Um, what if we subsidized the building of those, or we just funded the building of those uh, to do that, right? Um, California is one area where I think that that would be really beneficial because mm -hmm. you could, at the same time as uh, pursue carbon removal from the water, you could also use those at, use those same facilities that you build as uh, desalinization plants where you take the carbon and the salt out of the water so you can actually replenish the fresh water that California needs because they're constantly in a fucking drought. Uh, where do you do with all that salt? We have nothing to do with it right now. You can. It is entirely possible for human beings to take desalinization efforts, but it leaves you with a bunch of waste salt. And what do we do with it? You throw it in the know, ocean? Ionize it, you, you, sell it. There's not enough demand for that. So the only reason that's not happening is because there's no real good invention for it. Um, if we bury it in the, the place with all the nuclear waste, that's a possibility, but it's expensive. And it would be e cheaper and easier to just buy water from somewhere else, which is why they've gone that route. California Some of is it does have America. to go yeah. back to the ocean. Because you can't, you don't want to change the sal the salinization, uh, which would kill uh, more animals. If you're taking water out of the ocean, and the salt with it, I mean, it wouldn't change the percent of salinization, right? Uh, it would over time because if I if, if I took one bucket of salt back in, no, then okay. when it rains, Oh, uh, when it rains, okay, you're right. Then Rain. yeah, you have to have that salt still there. Okay. So you you do have to manage the salinization of the ocean. Okay. If you were to do that. That sounds large, difficult, and I'm on board for the government doing that. I think that's a good thing that the government could do. But I'm telling you, just just elect me. I don't think the whole country will be powered by nuclear, and we'll have desalinization plants working in California and to solve droughts. The Republicans <laughs> would run against you. They would. They take I'd fuck them over. They take money from Exxon. They take money from oil companies. They take money from uh, the people who do not want this to happen because it will hurt their bottom line. Here's the ANWR, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. I would suggest that this large piece of land is removing carbon from the air. And when do we hear about this in the news? only hear about this in the news when Republicans want to drill to take out the oil and Democrats tell them no. The, this is the ANWR that um, Republicans want to drill and take all the oil out of so that it will bring prices down and the Democrats say no. And what generally happens is it turns into a uh, partisan fight. Um, they, it is long-term environmentally friendly to leave this place alone, but it's short-term economical, uh, an economic boon to drill all the oil out of there. And I think if we want to slowly, cheaply, uh, get rid of carbon, if we want to slowly and cheaply uh, remove carbon from the air. We don't need a bunch of machines to do it. We don't need desalinization machines. We don't need uh, things that you put under the under the water that take the uh, carbon out and then create a byproduct of some sort that we have to take out and then bury. Just plant trees. We need large swaths of the world to be reforested. But and that, I argued for that before. And I, I, know, I know you did. And I think that it's a good idea, but it would reduce the amount of 
profitable lanes that we have. You know, we might have to bulldoze a few strip malls. We might have to close down a few uh, Best Buys. We might have to bulldoze some Walmarts to have the room for the trees. And that's why it will never be done. And I have to look I'm, up a stat real quick. I know because... that I'm just talking necessity right now, but all I'm doing is talking. I know uh, that I'm just pointing out necessities. I'm pointing out um, being the woke guy that the guy in the uh, video was complaining about. Yeah, how much... Uh, Carbon I'm just checking because I have I have to be correct when I say the next thing that sure, I say. Sure. So I'm sorry if you can hear my uh tapping on the keyboard. No, you're good. Uh you want me to keep talking or am I distracting you? Go for it. Okay. Um, when you look at a tree, note that about 5% of the tree is comp uh, compromised of leaves, 15% is stems, 60% goes to its trunk, and 20% roots. Uh, in one year, a mature tree will absorb more than 48 pounds of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and releases oxygen in exchange. So 48 pounds a year. And I would even go so far as to suggest that we grow them and then create a system where we're always growing more and then chopping down the oldest ones when they get too, too old and so that they don't burn and stuff like that. And then we create a system. Uh, the government would have to step in and create some sort of a, a cycle where we're constantly growing new trees, taking uh, carbon out of the air, and then chopping down the old ones, either using them, or just bury the damn things. Because then the carbon would be in the ground where it's not harming us, where it's not creating greenhouse gases, where it's not going, being absorbed by the ocean. And then, doomsday scenario, um, we all die in a horrible nuclear holocaust someday, and then the next civilization will have coal to use. <laughs> Because we buried all the trees. Uh, I missed a lot of that because I was reading. Sorry. That's um, fine. But uh, what you got? I mean, we could just not not mine the coal. We could just build nuclear power plants. It'd be really great. Um, then we can mine uranium instead. Yeah, we can uh, do all of these things. I want to, all of these things to happen. Let's see. Uh, we got about 2 billion acres of land in the mm -hmm. U.S. Mm -hmm. um, the primary purpose that it's used for right now, uh, the, two main, the two main ones are uh, cattle and forest land. Mm -hmm. um, now, cattle obviously would destroy forest land mm -hmm. uh, because you have to cut down the trees and plant grass and shit so that the mm -hmm. cattle can feed. Mm -hmm. uh, a little different than actual forest land. Um, but I also don't think that, uh, I also don't think that we should be removing forest land in favor of cattle either. So uh, we should have more forest land. Okay. So if you wanted to, I don't know, re reduce the amount of cattle, what would you do? We would make it a necessity to eat less meat. But now we're woke oh, again. Now we're woke. Now we're woke because I'm again suggesting that people eat less meat. I mean, you're never going to get me to do that. So I know, but uh, I mean, even <laughs> even one day, meatless Mondays. Are you on board? That's not one day. That's 52 days out of the year. Right. That would reduce your uh, meat consumption by a percentage, would it not? It would, okay. although now you're talking about um, 
actually the funny thing is that you're you're bringing back um almost a religious tradition i know i know that uh the meatless fridays was a thing but the wokest yeah. on meatless twitter fridays during lent usually um v vegans and vegetarians are annoying i get it i don't like them i'm not a i'm not one of them but the smartest of them don't suggest that somebody changed their entire life and changed their entire diet overnight. They suggest small things. They suggest, first of all, what's necessary. Hey, we have this much uh, cattle land. It could be doing better. It's harming uh, with the carbon. Here's a solution. Don't eat any meat on Monday. That's it. That would reduce your, by 52 out of 365, I don't know, there's a percentage there if you want to do the math. Uh, your meat consumption would go down by a percentage. And if everybody did that, then everybody's meat consumption comes down by a percentage and there is less a demand for that meat. And reforestation becomes possible because we have less demand. We have smaller uh, cattle fields. There are fewer of them. And so you could ideally fill that land, not with another Best Buy, but with trees. But what happens when I suggest that? A thousand people yell at me for being part of the Green New Deal and that I'm uh, kissing AOC's ass and I'm a dirty liberal who wants to take away all the fossil fuels. I think that it's, again, not as black and white as you're portraying it to be. Uh, for example, Reforestation is something that can happen uh, without the without well without much loss of of cattle lands, for example. Um, a lot of time, reforestation is taking place where uh, we lose like two percent ish of the currently existing forests that gets replanted. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you replant that a, a tree that's 50 years old is taking up a lot more carbon mm -hmm. than a tree that's two years old uh it's it's because the trees they they essentially grow uh perpetually right mm -hmm. and the larger they grow the more carbon that they're going to uh subsume uh where Yes, when we cut trees down, we do plant new trees, but those trees take time to um, recapture or to be capable of capturing the same amount of carbon as the, uh, the tree that was cut down. Yeah, we would need some sort of large study to determine when is the most opportune time to plant them, to uh, harvest them. And when they die, they're obviously not taking any more carbon out. So they would have to be cut down and dealt with either uh to be used as lumber or to be just buried in the ground and this is a job that only the government could do because i don't think there is a yes logging companies exist but they make more money the more trees they cut down the more lumber they sell to an extent unless they're flooding the market uh, they can make more money by cutting down more trees so we can't trust capitalism to solve this problem this is a government land use issue. And I think land use and tree cycles are exactly the thing a government ought to be doing. But I'm going to be partisan again right now and say one side does not want that to happen. One side would stand against it no matter what. And plenty of the other side would too. But um, so l l let me say that half of the Democrats would be against this plan and all of the Republicans would be against it. Just like me, bro. Just like me. I know. <laughs> well, when you have... I'll, I'll, I'll put forward the same. Yeah, when you can tell the Republicans what to do, I would be much happier with them. It's, uh, I, I'll take that as high praise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be much happier with them. I'd be much less doomer about them being in charge. But they... I can't trust them at the moment. I don't think that they're smarter than me. That's part of the issue. Uh, do I think Joe Biden is smarter than me? Possibly. 
Do I think Trump is smarter than me? No, absolutely not. Do I think uh, Kamala is smarter than me? Yeah, she's got a law degree. She was a uh, thing for a lo very long time. I don't know how to do that. So she's got something on me. Do I think Sarah Palin is smarter than me? No, not even a little bit. And uh, I think it was other another Plato quote. I know I'm looking up uh, uh, quotes here. Uh, I wonder if that's actually um, a common thread between R's and D's. Uh, maybe it's um, narcissistic of me or or arrogant or something, but uh, I would have said no to all of those. You don't think any of them are smarter than you? No. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, and hey, guess what? One of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. So if I'm so smart Look at that. that I don't participate in politics because they're all stupider than me, guess what? They win. I have to be governed by them. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good quote. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and, and real and true. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're going to be governed by your inferiors. That's just a thing that's going to happen. So, um, which is why we shouldn't refuse to participate. I don't think the right has that problem. The left does. Tons of people. Yeah. Bounced. I'll agree once, with that. Uh, once, uh, once Bernie lost, a whole bunch of people just abandoned. <laughs> yeah. They sort of dropped out. They refused to participate. Um, mm -hmm. Which I agree is a problem. Um, now, the people that wanted to vote for Bernie in the first place, I think a lot of them <laughs> had some of the not not so great ideas. But uh... I think they got drawn to him just because of uh, certain ideas about him and th things, the way he acts, the way he talks. And he's very exciting and he's going to shake things up and they want to think shaken up. I will say that in 2016... Uh, there were only three candidates that I was willing to vote for, and Bernie was one of them. Mm -hmm. So, there is that. <laughs> uh, I had, uh, of course, you know, Trump was top of the list. Uh, mm -hmm. Rand Paul was the next one. Mm -hmm. And we then should, after that was Bernie. We should discuss him at some point. I don't have anything nice to say about him. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe next week. I mean, we're, we're yeah, almost yeah. three we're, hours in I was now, about so. to... Uh tell you that we should call it off i have to go eat lunch and i think we did good today um i had a great time yeah this is super this was, good. Uh, an excellent stream yeah i think so too um so um i'll just like last time i'll send you some uh, links on like friday or something like that and then on saturday we'll talk about them uh if you watch any good shows let me know um maybe we can talk about video games next time have you played final fantasy 6 I have not, but maybe I will by the time uh, next week happens. You're missing so. out, first of all. Second, uh, it's on Steam under the uh, Pixel remaster, and it's properly uh, translated. Don't play the old versions. And okay. get the get the Pixel remaster on Steam if you're interested. I'm not telling you what to do, but uh, it is... I, th I probably have rose-tinted glasses. Like you said, Final Fantasy X was your childhood. Well, six was my childhood, so... Uh, <laughs> That is why I appreciate it so much. And it's got a ton of good things going for it. Um, Fair enough. And if you, I will maybe give it a shot. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I would love to talk to you about that or any other video game or anything like that. So next week, uh, we'll do the news and then video games. Sure. Although uh, it's going to be probably a short stream because I don't imagine us having very contentious uh, opinions on video games. I don't think we will either. Maybe it won't. <laughs> we all have to. Might not. It, I, it, it'll be a good talk. I mean, maybe not the best. Uh, viewership. We'll have to. We'll have to uh, find a contentious video generally. game. We'll have to find yeah. a contentious video game to talk about. Something that I'll actually like, buy. Like too. Harry Potter. Uh, oh shit! You don't have to buy it. I'm not going to. I don't <laughs> like Harry Potter, but we could always talk about that. True. All right, and that is it for the stream. Anybody? Who stuck around this long i appreciate you watching uh thanks for coming in thanks for listening uh click the like button click the 
subscribe button, watch the videos, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. And